guys, what's up? I'm Brian here doing another video for you guys, and this time we are taking a look at the Fury of Bone Crusher. This is a Transformers 2 pack featuring Bone Crusher in a battle damage look and Ironhide in his recon mold. Let's go ahead and take a look at Bone Crusher first. Now, this was also in the lineup with a Starscream and Mudflap 2 pack, but I only got the Bone Crusher and Ironhide 2 pack because I, honestly, I think that's the better one. Anyways, let's take a look at Bone Crusher, as I said before, and uh, this is pretty cool. This is the first time I ever owned Bone Crusher. I never got the jungle um, Bone Crusher or the original movie Bone Crusher, although I really wanted the original one when it came out, and I so badly wanted the jungle one. In fact, I still am kind of looking at the jungle one, and I'm still kind of wondering if I should get that. I don't know, maybe I will soon, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Anyways, Bone Crusher looks very cool, and he's got this battle damaged look. Um, I'm guessing that's based off what happened in the first movie. Apparently he survived, I guess, and now we have this toy. Now, I don't know if that's in canon to the movie verse, but just for the toys at least, we got Bone Crusher. So, um, yeah, and it's also interesting that... Um, Bone Crusher was actually seen in Revenge of the Fallen, or at least a Transformer that had the same CGI model as Bone Crusher, because you can see him at some point. Um, I, I think they were just reusing the same CGI model. I don't think that was actually Bone Crusher, so I just want to point that out. Um, anyways, this guy looks pretty cool. Um, he's got the main color, which is tan. Um, some of this detail could have been picked out, but uh, considering that he's an army vehicle, I'm fine with it. I don't mind. Um, he's also got this kind of honey mustard color for some of the bits, so there's that. And then some blue for the windows, some gray for the wheels, not black, so that's pretty cool. And uh, he looks pretty cool. I believe he's some sort of buffalo truck, army truck thing with this extension. And uh, this claw thing is pretty cool. Now, originally, I believe this is supposed to be used um, in case of bombs. You know, it would actually pick out the bomb and do stuff, I guess. I don't know. I'm not in the army. But uh, it's pretty cool. It's got a lot of articulation. It's got a joint right here. It's got a joint right here. It's got a couple of joints right here. And then not only that, it's got this extra added gimmick to where you can rotate these around and you can move this lever and then the claws would move. Unfortunately, it doesn't do such a good job. It's very tight. So I can't really show you guys um, with a good demonstration. But uh, still, it looks pretty cool. Um, some of the joints are a little too loose for my taste. Um, I don't know if that's because this is the third version of Bone Crusher and some of the joints just have worn out over time. Um, but, uh, I still think the look is pretty cool, and he's got a Decepticon logo on the top. Uh, for a size comparison, here he is with, uh, Ironhide. So, he's not really into scale with that. Um, here's also another size comparison. Here's Jazz. So, you got that. And it's pretty cool. Now, originally, Bone Crusher was a Constructicon, but they decided to go with something different, but it feels kind of dis uh, Constructicon-esque. You know, it's not a construction vehicle, but it feels like it could be. I mean, this could be used to dig up stuff or rake leaves or something like that, I guess. So, you have that. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and transform it, and you will see some scars along the side here. But there is more battle damage in his robot mode. So let's go ahead and transform him. What you want to do to start is you want to get this out of the way and just move that in and up like so. So that it's right in the middle. Next, what you want to do is take these little claw bits and just untab them and open that up like so. And that will unlock the legs from this back section. So what you can do with that is you can move that up and you can move this section up. And unfortunately, that is a huge mass of kibble, but at least it gets out of the way for some part. Anyways, what you want to do next is you want to, um, let's see, you want to separate the arms like so. I'm sorry, it's been a while. Um, oh, sorry, you want to open these up like so. And then open up the arms. I almost broke the figure. Uh, next, what you want to do is take the head and move that up, like so. And then take these sections and move them down and accordion them like so to where this crotch piece 
will fit between the tires and hold that in place. It doesn't do a fantastic job. I wish something connected to the back, but uh, I guess it does okay. Anyways, rotate the legs like so, open that section up, and then move this into the middle. Do the same thing to the other side, open that up. You can see that just untached by itself. Come on. Come on. And there we go. And then move that section into the middle. Uh, next, uh, let's see. Let's, let's transform the claw. So what I like to do is bring that up and then separate the section while moving the tab just so that it's not out of place. And then swing it down from the tab. And then you want to open these up. There's a little joint that will allow you to open these up just a bit, just to separate the claws, and I'm having a hard time with that. There's also a rotation joint, so you can do a lot with this. There we go. And then do the same thing to the other side. Unfortunately, on this side, it's very loose, so I have to bring this up just a bit so that the uh, so that gravity will do its job of keeping it in place. Anyways, move that completely up. And then the last couple of steps is move up this panel right in here. You don't really need to do that, but they give you the option. And then bring out the hands like so. And there is Bone Crusher in his robot mode. And uh, he looks very good, even to this day. I, I really do like the aesthetic of this guy. Again, unfortunately, some of the joints are loose, but um, I don't know if that's because, again, it's an older figure or because this is the third version of it. Um, but still, it has a very nice look. Now, what you can do with the arms is you can bring them out, and you can do whatever you want with that. So, you have that articulation going for it. You also have a joint that will move this up and down and rotate it from this section. You can also bring this up and down and rotate this from here. So, a lot of articulation in the arms, but unfortunately, has nothing really in the elbow to move that up and down, but luckily you do have articulation in this, so you don't really need it. Um, the head is on the ball joint, very good. There's ball joint right here, a mushroom joint, and then the knee moves. And then the front toes also move, and you can move this around to move the tires in place. Just like in the first movie where he's skating around on the street, you can simulate that with the tires on the legs, so that's pretty cool. Um, you will notice that there is a lot of detail on this guy. First up, you have one red eye and one that's completely blacked out. Meant to simulate when Optimus Prime pretty much took out his eye in the first movie. Uh, but you also have other battle damage. This is completely stripped of its paint. You open these up and you can see a little bit of detail inside here, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you can see some of the battle, uh, bleh, <laughs> battle damage right here. You can see some battle damage right here. It looks like a window has purposely been removed from inside here. Either that or I got a mistake. Um, the marks right here is not a, uh, a battle damage, but you can use it as battle damage. It's just the fact that moving those joints, uh, the paint has been stripped. You also have some paint that's been stripped right here, but that's made on purpose. Uh, you get some silver detail inside here, so that's pretty cool. And then you may notice that there's a lot of detail going on inside the body. There's also a mark right there. So a lot of detail actually going into this. So I really do like that. And then you also have the claw like in the movie. You can bring this up and he can do whatever he wants. And it's got a lot of articulation going on for it. It goes pretty much as far as that moving forward. So that's pretty cool. Um, and if you got the Voyager Optimus Prime, that will probably work the best, considering that the Leader Class Optimus Prime is completely out of scale, even though that Bone Crusher was taken out pretty quickly. I, I think he stand up at least a little bit of a challenge, and him being this size doesn't really help that. Uh, size comparison, here is Chrome Dome, so he is kind of a small deluxe, so that doesn't really help. But uh, I guess if he got the Voyager Optimus Prime, it works. So I really do like Bone Crusher, but he's not the only figure we've got in this two-pack. We've got the Recon Ironhide Repaint. Now, he's not really accurate to his on-screen version, and I'm not just talking uh, talking about the armaments, because that's made for this mold. It's a special uh, specialized mold. Um, but the paint scheme itself, it's got this dark blue color scheme, which I guess is supposed to be a reflective color scheme, but it's just dark blue. 
Um, but I think it really helps, especially when you have these sand particles on the side here. It, it really brings out that rugged look to Ironhide. And the tires being in that muddy color just really help. And I really do like that. Um, another thing that I really like is the weapons. Now, I love the weapons in the original Ironhide, but they were this brown color. And I don't know why they were, but they were. Uh, for these weapons, they're just in gray, and they have a little bit of detail. I mean, on this gun, you can see some blue, so that's pretty cool. He's got two knives, and they both have the clips, and you can plug them onto different figures. And then you got the guns, which have the, uh, the pegs and the clips. You also have pegs on the back of each weapon, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you also have a clip on the top of the scope, so you can do whatever you want with that. And you also have a clip at the bottom here, so you can do whatever you want with that. So that's pretty cool. And then you have a number of clips on this. You have the clips right here, or the uh, the bars, I should say, right here. Uh, the bars on the top, the bars on the side. So you can do a lot of stuff with that. Uh, he's also got the guns at the bottom here, which I just like to slide the missile underneath here, just to have somewhere to go, because otherwise it has nowhere to go. Um, you may have noticed that a mirror is missing, unfortunately. I mean, this is an older toy, so certain things get lost, but at least I have the one. And you will notice a nice silver Autobot logo on the top. The original Ironhide did not have that, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but again, the sand particles, very nice detail. I like the silver. It's picked out. Very nice. It doesn't have the silver stripes, but I think that's fine. And I love the grill section with this dark gunmetal color. Nothing else that I'm seeing has that dark gunmetal color scheme, maybe the head. Um, but uh, this decided, hey, let's just add it onto the front. Uh, Bone Crusher might have a little bit of that, but I'm not seeing much of it, if there is. So, uh, pretty cool nonetheless. To transform this, it's actually very complex uh, to do this, and I've forgotten a lot of the stuff. Oh yeah, little gold bits right here. That's very nice. And little bits of red. And you can see that some of the gears are a different color than the blue, so that really stands out. A lot of people may not like that, but I kind of do. And you have an Autobot logo on the back. Anyways, once again, transformation. What you want to do is bring these out and fold this out, like so. Now you can take this completely off. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, bring down the arms like so, and separate them like that. Next, what you want to do is unclip the doors like so. And these are supposed to spring out, but they don't really do such a good job. Um, and the unfortunate side to that is they don't really lock into place, but there is something you can do with these. Anyways, let me just bring up the camera just a bit so that we can see what we're doing. There we go. All right. Next, what you want to do is pop out these back doors like so and swing them open, move these to the side, and open these sections up like so. There's a couple of panels that are on double joints, you just bring them out. And then this section on the back will open up and you can bring the legs down. Just move up the arms as far as you can for right now, but don't push them in all the way. Next, what you want to do is take this peg and that will clip into place. And you can see that the waist, it has a little bit of give, you just move that up. Next, take this piece and bring that all the way down. And rotate this section around. I'm sorry if I'm not showing that too well. Uh, take this section and rotate it completely around like so. It's pretty hard and pretty tight, but it's possible. Anyways, open this section up like so. And let's focus on the legs because they're pretty quick. So what you want to do for the legs is separate them like so. Bring out the feet and the heel and just go slowly on that. And then this little panel in the back will move out. And then the tire on the back section right here will move in like so. And you have a little bit more room to bring down the panel like so. I'm hopefully going to show you a better uh, version of that on this side. So that just moves down. Let me try that again. That just moves down like so, and you'll notice that the tire moves out too. And then this little panel does something too. Uh, that just moves out of the way. So a lot of stuff going on for that, and I love the transformation on the legs. Anyways, what you want to do for this top section is, let's see, let's bring down the arms like so and just bring them out to the side 
like that. And you will notice that the waist likes to disconnect quite often. Anyways, uh, what you want to do for this is bring this up like so. And then there's a little tab inside here that will go into this little gap section that's on a double joint. So you move this down like so on this panel and then move that up. And I'm sorry that I'm doing such a bad job at showing this off, but it is a really hard transformation to show off. And as you bring down the windshield, what you want to do is what I like to do is take the missile and push that onto the back. There's a little bar section that you can see right there. And just push that out just a little bit. And what that will do is that will bring out the head and pull that as far out as you can. And the backpack will also move with that. Um, let's see. Uh, you also want to rotate this section around. I forgot to show that off. So just this whole section right here will rotate around. And it's kind of tricky to get things out of the way. But once you do, and just move things around. Make sure that that section is clipped into place. Like so. You can see that little clip right there. And then that section right there that will attach. Again, sorry that I'm not really doing such a good job at this. Clip that into place. Make sure that the head's out all the way. This little panel will move up. And then snap the tires on the little peg so that the head doesn't move. Bring the arms down, rotate them around, and what I like to do is rotate the fists so that they're not in the way once you connect the arms. So once you do that, that is Recon Ironhide, or act actually it's not necessarily Recon Ironhide, um, but there is Ironhide in his robot mode. And he looks very nice. I, I gotta say, this looks so cool. Especially in the blue color scheme, which is odd. I, I didn't think that the blue color scheme would work, but it really, really does, and I do like it. There's a lot of detail going on with this toy. And I just forgot, because I haven't really brought this out in a long time, how good this actually is. I also love the sand particles on the uh, chest and the doors. I think that looks pretty cool. Now, what you can do with all this back kibble is uh, first what you can do is take off the grill section. And there's a reason why you want to do that, which I'll show off in a sec. But anyways, what you can do is bring down the doors. And what I like to do is bring these up like so. And then bring these little doors in. And they will push this back. So I just need to accordion this to where these bar sections will fold up. And that will kind of keep everything in place. So you have this, and you have, uh, sorry, you have a nice shape to it as well, so just fiddle around with that. You'll find a nice shape that will work for you. Anyways, the articulation. You got a ball joint in the head. Very nice head, by the way. Uh, you got out and in for the arm. You got forward and back, and then uh, you have a rotation right here. You have an elbow joint that goes pretty much a 90 degrees, and then you got a ball joint on the fist, but it just it's just made for the rotation. Uh, for the waist, what you have is the legs can go out and in, uh, like that, so forward and back, out and in, and then you have a rotation right here, you have knee, and then you can try and get the feet to be uh, manipulated uh, due to the uh, mech gimmick or whatever gimmick, um, but there's no, not really that much you can do with the feet. Um, anyways, with that said, uh, this figure has a bunch of weapons. And because all the bars are attached onto the back, you can store all the weapons on this guy without, you know, having to use it. So that's pretty cool. Um, the grill section goes onto the back, but again, I'll show that off in a second. But you have all these weapons that can be clipped onto the back section. Or what you can do is you can get them to hold all the weapons. Uh, you can get them to hold the guns. You can get them to hold the swords. Or you can have this guy just completely armed up and have every weapon do something. Uh, what you can do for this is you can attach the knife and the uh, the sniper. Now it doesn't really matter which knife you use, I just like to use this blade. And what you can do with this is you can attach it like so, or you can attach it like so on the side. There's a little section on the side there that will allow you to do this. And then what you can do is attach this little gun like so. You could also give these weapons to crosshairs, and that would work perfectly. 
Uh, you can also attach the knife, I believe, to the end of the gun, but I might be wrong about that. Anyways, what I like to do with this side is add the knife, and then what you do for this gun is you pop that off completely, because there's a couple of holes, and yes, you can pop off the uh, side cannons if you want, but you can see the holes on the side here. Now you're going to use these holes, or no, sorry, you're going to use these holes, and you can see that the missile will go into place and lock in, and you can fire that off if you want. And take this grill section, slide it in like so, and plug that onto the side like so. And what that means is, your cannon just became a bow and arrow. So that's pretty cool. Just a simple little thing, but it's very nice. This is the weapon specialist, after all. He needs a, a huge amount of weapons, and I'm so glad that he has a huge amount of weapons. Uh, again, for a size comparison, here he is next to Bone Crusher, and the size isn't really that good. Um, here's Chrome Dome. So you have that. Um, and I also want to do another comparison with Recon Ironhide. Now, I always will love the Recon Ironhide. Always. I, I mean, this is pretty cool. The black version is just nice. I love the stripes. I love the coloring, the gold, the blue. It's just, ah, it's so perfect. The silver on this especially just looks impressive. But this guy's pretty cool. If you can't get this guy and you find this guy for a fair price, I'd say go ahead and get the iron hide. There's probably going to be a lot of people that are just going to sell off the iron hide because they don't really care, but they like the bone crusher. Um, but I, I don't know. This iron hide is very cool. If you can get, uh, sorry, if you can get both, that's fine. Like, I have both, and I have no issue with that. I love this, and I think the weapons on this guy is so cool. Now, I love the paint job on this a little bit more than this, because it's closer to that of the movie. Um, and I like the detail, and I like the silver and how that pops. But this guy looks very cool. You get that dark uh, gunmetal color to his feet, so I guess there is another place where that dark uh, gunmetal color scheme does work and then his chest also has that too uh you get some blue with the weapons and they're actually gray not not that brown color like the recon iron hide and it just works overall so i'm sorry that this review is long but we're taking a look at two figures after all and they're really good figures you know um is this two pack for everyone i don't think so i think some people are going to go after the original bone crusher and then the recon iron hide rather than this but if you can find this for a fair price, I'd say go ahead and get it, because it's a pretty cool two-pack. Um, I don't recall these two actually showing up together. I think in Revenge of the Fallen, where Bear, uh, not Bear Kid, Bone Crusher showed up, or the uh, the double for Bone Crusher showed up, uh, the, the reused CGI model for this guy. I think Ironhide was in the same scene. I could have that wrong. So I guess that's pretty much what ties these two together. But uh, I really do like this. So with that said, I thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all this fun. Do that, and I'll see you guys next.